Well, I bet you a good uh, morning, Newcastle. Uh, somebody, uh, like a copy of God's written word to read rather than to burn. But of course, um, you burn the word of God unless you repent of that, then your soul will burn in eternal flames for all eternity. Rejection of God's word, rejection of his love, his salvation, only one end to that, damnation. Damnation from dam for damn worthy sinners. And then, of course, that's why I come to you. That's why I bring God's word to you in order that you might be saved from that damn worthy condition in which you're in without Jesus, without the Son of God who came into the world to reveal God's love to you, came into the world to reveal God's salvation and try to procure it. He himself is the Savior, the one, the only one that died for sinners rose again from the dead in order that you might be brought to a knowledge of God, knowledge of his love, intimately that is, of course nobody but nobody can prove to you that God exists. Come into the world, you see, you were conceived in sin, you were conceived in that damn worthy condition that you're in now, you were conceived in that fashion in your mother's womb. That's where your godlessness began. Then, of course, you're born in that state nine months later in a damn worthy condition, blind, daft, and deaf to the voice of God, to the overtures of his love. That's why you see that uh, Jesus says um, in his word that you must be born again. See, unless, unless that vile nature in which you got from your parents, unless that vile nature of yours is changed by the supernatural power of God, then, well, you'll never know. You'll never understand. You'll never get it. Except the man be born again, cannot see cannot perceive, cannot understand the kingdom of God, let alone enter into it. But the knowledge of God, all that you've got, and no matter who you use, you know, the fool Darwin or the fool Dawkins, they just make fools of you more. Already fools in your heart because you see that there is no God. But of course, Sam, um, these people just confirm you in your hardness and impenitent heart. They don't do you any favors. They don't do you any, any good, none whatsoever. They're fools and blind just as you are yourself. See, I can't prove to you, nobody can prove to you that God exists, but you know he does. You got an innate knowledge within you of God. You're born that way, so we are made, see? because all the things that God has made, well, that leaves you without excuse. You had no excuse before I came here this morning. But of course, the fact that I'm here now telling you these things, you've got even less excuse. Unless, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish of your sin, of the evil hearts of unbelief. And of course, well, you deny, don't call yourself an atheist. There's no such a thing as an atheist on planet Earth. Call yourself what you are. Call yourself a liar. Call yourself a denier. But don't call yourself an atheist. That you're not. Liars and deniers of that which is plain, the evidence of which is before you, the things uh, pertaining to God, of course, as the Bible says, are clearly seen. Even the invisible things of God are clearly seen. But of course, you can't see them. 
because you don't want to see them. You don't see them because you're naturally blind. And only Jesus can open the eyes of the blind. Naturally deaf, and only Jesus can open the ears of the deaf. Only he can raise you from that state of death in which you come into the world. Unless he does, of course, except he does, you remain that way, born in sin, conceived in sin, born in sin, live in sin, die in sin, and then that state of death becomes everlasting, cut off from God for all eternity, from his love, from his grace, his kindness, uh, any goodness, none whatsoever. Instead of the unquenchable love of God, you're left with nothing but the unquenchable fires and flames of hell. So I come tell you these things, come tell you the good news that God has a love for you. Christ is dead for your sins and uh, alive from the dead, risen in order that you might be justified, made right with God need making right because well like i say not right to begin with conceived born in sin sinful natures cut off from god alienated from the life of god no life in you just a miserable sinful existence that's all nothing but wickedness of heart deceitful above all things and desperately wicked a deceitful heart what do you expect to get from a deceitful heart? Deceitful heart will always gravitate towards the lie. So you believe the lie, and you live out of the lie, and what have you got? Life? No. Love, joy, happiness? No. Nothing but your constant, miserable, sinful existence. That's all you got. No life apart from God. No life until you connect with Jesus by faith. For the Son of God who loved sinners and gave himself for them, came into the world not to make you healthy, wealthy, prosperous, came into the world to save sinners, and that's what you be, all of you. All the sin that comes short of the glory of God. And in need of God's salvation, God's Son, the only one, who can bring you to life, life from the dead, Jesus. What he came for, and of course he paid the price. Psalmist, he says, God's word for you here today. Fools, don't you know? Fools, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And of course, fools mock at sin. That's nothing unusual. Get that all the time. Not a trouble to me, but it's certainly a trouble to you and will be a trouble to you, lest that is you repent. That is, a, lest God gives you repentance, lest he gives you faith. Because, see, here's the problem, you know. It's not down to you. It's not, not down to your strength, your power, total inability, save yourself. Come to Jesus, trust in Jesus. I tell you, but you're not able. Not unless God gives it to you. It's not you that does the choosing. It's God does that. It's whether he'll have you or not. Of course, on that basis, well, you need to get on your knees and cry out to him that, well, that he would have you, that he would save you. Because down to him in the end, not you. I pity I pity your blindness, your mockery, your foolishness. Doesn't trouble me in the least, but it does fill my heart with pity. Fills my heart with sadness. The pitiable blindness of your heart. I pray God today would have mercy on you, that he would reveal himself to you, his salvation to you, his son to you, Reveal your sin to you first of all. Convict you of it that you might be, you might be saved. No guarantees. I preach the gospel to you in order that with the hope, the prayer, well, that God would have mercy on you, that he would turn you, 
turn you out of your foolish hearts of unbelief, evil hearts of unbelief, and he would turn you out of your sin, out of your darkness, and into his marvelous light. Light for the word of God for you here today. Psalmist, he says, Psalm 49, you want to check it out. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, and he shall receive me. How can he say this? His soul will be redeemed. Well, because the redemption price has been paid, that's why. Price has to be paid, you know, for sin. In order to buy you back, you know, from that dark path of sin that you're in by nature, and of course by practice too. It's not just the practice, it's your very nature, you know, hating God and hating your neighbor. Of course, that's writ large, isn't it, all over your society today, hatred for God, you know. And the proverb says that, well, those that hate me, God that is, they love death. That too is writ large all over your society today. A love affair with death, you know, killing, killing by means of abortion, by means of euthanasia, drugs and violence, killing, 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 hating God and hating your neighbor. That's your very nature. That's why you live in a nasty world an evil world, an evil society, a murderous society, a dangerous society. That's why you have to lock your doors every night and every day. That's why you have to lock your cars, because there's evil people afoot, and you're one of them. Lest you've been to Jesus, that is. Lest he's paid the redemption price, but to get you back from that state and condition, well, the price has to be paid. Somebody has to pay the debt, you know, sin. And of course, well, that's the price Jesus says you can't pay yourself. Unless he says you pay even the last farthing. He says you never get out of that jail of sin and of death and hell. Never get out of it unless you pay the last farthing. In other words, you can't pay it's beyond you, no matter how much money you got, no matter how rich, wealthy you might be, you haven't got enough to pay the debt of sin. Only one could do that, Jesus. That's what he came for. That's what he lived, loved and died for on that cross. So that we right now, over his cross now, paid in full. The debt's been paid in full by Jesus. His blood was the redemptive cost, the price. Son of God had to come into the world, take our nature, become one of us, live and love and die, rise again from the dead. But the price has been paid. Try the psalmist, he says, but God will redeem my soul because he's provided, he's provided the necessary, the redemptive price, the sacrifice. Religion, of course, you know. Religion like Islam, you know, without any blood sacrifice, that's no good to man or beast. No redemptive price there, no debt paid there, no blood sacrifice. God says in his word that without the shedding of blood there can be no forgiveness, no remission of sin, because there's no redemptive price there. Blood has to be shed. Life is in the blood, the law of God says, and the life of God is in the blood of his son Jesus Christ. He shed his blood, came into the world, became one of us, lived and died on that cross, suffered. No man ever suffered, never shall, as he did, paid the price and full, the redemptive price. Comes free to you, offered free to you today to be reconciled to God by the blood of his son, but cost great cost, enormous cost, not silver and gold, 
No, there are the wealth in the world, not the richest. Billionaire, Bezos or Zuckerberg, none of them got enough. No, the precious, precious blood of a lamb shed on that cross in order that you might be set free. Offer to you freely today salvation, the redemptive price paid in full. All you have to do is simply receive the offered gift for God so loved the world that he gave his son up to the death of the cross that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But if the redemptive price is not paid, Jesus doesn't pay your bill, he doesn't pay your debt, then you have to pay it yourself. And hell, that is for all eternity. You breathe your last, you see, that's not the end. That's not the end of you. That's what the godless tell you. That's what your evil heart of unbelief would tell you. Now it's appointed unto man wants to die. After that, not finished then. After that then comes judgment. Then you stand before the judge of all the earth. Then you stand before that dreadful, fearful judge Jesus. And he will cast your soul into eternal damnation forever. Unless the price has been paid. Unless Jesus himself confesses on your behalf on that day when God judges you that he himself has paid the price. He himself has brought you back from sin, Satan, the devil, and hell. But if he hasn't paid the price, if his blood hasn't cleansed you, washed you, made you clean, well, you'd be filthy un and dirty and unclean and unacceptable to God. Even your righteousness is your very best efforts, says God, are like filthy rags like a menstrual cloth in the sight of God. So you see, you must needs be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Lamb of God is called Jesus. Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. But take yours away today, should you, that is, but repent and believe and trust in him, his person, his blood sacrifice. The redemptive price that he has made. Go away, boy. Hey, go up. Go up. Like I say, fools mock at sin. Fools say in their heart there's no God. Wicked, unbelieving hearts. That's enough, don't you know? That's enough on its own to damn you for all eternity. That's without all the other. That's without all your law breaking. That's without all your commandment breaking. That's without your idolatry, your false religions, your fornicating, your sodomy, your lying, your coveting, and your stealing. That's without all that. You got all that on top. All to answer for, Jesus says, you give account for every idle word that you've spoken. Plus your evil heart of unbelief. No. For that, my friends, now, even presently, you are in a state, a damn worthy state and condition. Without Jesus, without that redemptive price, unless he purchases you by his blood, unless he washes you and cleanses you, Lamb of God, which take away your sin today, one day will be your judge, unless he's your savior. Some point in this, history of yours, this life, this miserable existence of yours, in that day when God judges you, you know, lest there's a time that you can point back to in your history and say, that's the time when I was born again. That's when Jesus came to me. That's when God changed me. That's when God made me a new creature. Unless you can point to such a time in your history, in that day, in that day, the judge of all the earth will cast you into the flames of hell. Perish forever 
If you do not believe that I am he, you will die, perish in your sin for all eternity. So what I happen to you, Newcastle sinners, that they repent, that they turn to Jesus for the redemptive price, call upon his name, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, that is, shall be saved. Call upon his name today, ask him, cry out to him that he wash you, wash your sin away, give you a new heart, make you a new creature, cause you to be born again, because unless you are, you'll never see, never understand, perceive the kingdom of God, let alone enter into it today or tomorrow. Not tonight. You haven't got tonight. What if God was to require your soul tonight? What if he was to take you out of this world this afternoon? You haven't got tonight. You haven't got tomorrow. You haven't got next week. You haven't got your old age. Now is the time, the accepted time, says God. The only time that you've got. You're not guaranteed another minute. So you need to get on your knees, Newcastle Center. Cry out to God, plead with Him, that He would have mercy upon your damn worthy souls. Today, today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts, that the redemptive price has been paid, the work has been done, nothing for you to do but simply believe, truly believe. In Jesus Christ, the Son of God, if thou canst believe all things are possible, even your salvation, the faith in the Son of God, who has done the work, paid the price, the redemptive price. It's the power, you see, of the death of the Son of God, the power over death, that is. Don't you know that blood that he shed in the cross, divine blood, divine blood, the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ shed on that cross. That's what makes it powerful. That's what makes it effective. It can take away the worst of sin, the deep dyed sin, you know, ingrained sin in your DNA, in your very natures, in the vitals of your soul. You know, these, these wicked addictions that you've got, you know, to drugs and alcohol, an immorality of all kinds, you know, that you can't get the beaten of, you can't overcome the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ, give you the beaten of them, deliver you from the deepest died sin. It's powerful blood, powerful blood of the Lamb. Oh, I tell you, the worst of sinners, tell you about, I tell you about Islamists, Tell you about drug addicts, tell you about drunkards that have been saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb, made clean, made fit for God, made fit for heaven, made fit for purpose, for living even in this world. Save the blood of God's Son applied to the soul, redeems, it's powerful, it's effective, I tell you, the worst of you, change you, transform you wash and cleanse you but break cancel the power of sin i mean if you can't can't overcome your addictions uh, you can't overcome your addiction to you know to cigarettes to that drug or alcohol or your immorality your sodomy your fornicating i mean you can't give those up you can't break the power of those those lusts and habits all the religion in the world won't do that for you. Only one commodity, only one, the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ, shed on that cross, the redemptive price has been paid, paid in full. And those who trust in Jesus, His person, His blood shed on that cross, they get washed, they get made clean, they get delivered, from their vile sins and their vile hearts of unbelief. They get saved, they get washed, and they get delivered from the power of sin. 
And of course, from the power of death, you know, and your unbelief, or you like to think, you like to think that there's no God. I know that, but you can't get away from it. Uh -huh. You can't escape, you can't escape death. That's all you got to look forward to. You godless, atheistic people, hear me. That's all that you've got to look forward to. And it trolls you, it follows you every single day of your life and spoils everything that you do, everything that you obtain, because that's all that you've got to look forward to. Death is coming, the Grim Reaper's coming. One day, he'll wrap his slimy fingers around your soul and he'll drag it out of your screaming body and he'll return it to God who will dispense with your soul on the basis of what you've done or not done with his son Jesus Christ. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, as boys that give themselves to men for toys, not abusers of themselves but mankind, that's homosexuals, male and female. The thieves, the covetous, the drunkards, the revilers, the extortioners shall inherit the king of the kingdom of God. But speaking to Christians goes on to say, and such were some of you, but you are washed and you're sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Because of the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb, powerful blood of Jesus Christ, the redemption price has been paid to redeem your soul from the grave, block you from the very jaws of death that wait to swallow you up. And hell, hell that swallows hard on its heel. Jaws are wide open, waiting to receive you in your folly, in your unbelief, your evil hearts of unbelief. Let that not be your end, you castle sinners. But today, repent and believe the gospel. Turn from your sin, get you washed and made clean in the blood of the Lamb. That blood, Abel, Abel, I tell you, to redeem you from the grave from the jaws of death. My sheep, says Jesus, they hear my voice and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life. Only cure, the only remedy for death. Life, my friends, life is the only cure. And without it, you haven't got life now. You're in a state of death now. And you breathe your last and go out of this world, you close your eyes in death, you open them the other side, because death's not the end. It's appointed unto man wants to die. After that then comes the judgment. Then you stand before the judge of all the earth, and you give account even for this time. When you heard the gospel of his grace, his love, his favor, his kindness it would redeem you that would save you but you would not hear would not hearken not jeered the very notion the very concept of the being of god what will god do with you in such a day as that i tell you i warn you flee from the wrath to come flee from the wrath to come before you burn turn Turn ye, turn ye, turn ye. Why will you die, saith the Lord? When there is life, eternal life, to be had, to be found in Jesus, the one who paid the redemptive price. Work has been done. Jesus, Son of God, has accomplished it all. Nothing for you to do but to receive it. For he shall receive me, says the psalmist, received on the basis of God's grace, his free grace. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Saved likes me, saved, I guess, could save you. For God willing to that is, but of course his grace is not only free, it's sovereign. He gives it to whoever he pleases to give it to. But it is free, you see, you can't work for it, be religious for it. You can't pay for it, you can't be good for it, you can't be or do nothing for it. It's free, gratis, that's the word, you know, gratis, you know. Don't do nothing, all you have to do is simply reach out the hand in humility, you know, humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God and reaching out the hand of faith and humility and receiving the gift offered to you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the gift of God. Eternal life, whosoever shall believe on the Son of God shall not perish but have everlasting life for the want of reception, receiving the wonderful free grace of God. He came to his own, his own people that is. They did not receive him. But to those who did receive him, those who did humble themselves, those who did acknowledge their sin, those who did repent of their sin, those who reached out the hand of faith and received it to them that believed on his name, he gave them the right, the authority, the power to become children of God. That's how you become a child of God, how you enter the family of God, not by being religious, doing religion. All the religion in the world won't save you, won't change you, transform you, won't get you a pass on that day. No, only grace, only free grace, grace of God and Jesus Christ by grace. Are you saved through faith? Through faith, faith in the Son of God, that is. The person of Jesus, God, and man in one person died on the cross, shed his blood, suffered, bled, and died. Take away your sin, its guilt, your shame, your blame. Lift the curse of God from off of you, deliver you from the wrath of God that hangs over you now. For he died, what he suffered and died for on that cross to deliver you from such by grace by the grace of god not your doing by the grace the free grace of god through faith in the son of god the loved sinners the rebels yeah under that cross there were soldiers there were thieves there was murdered and there was religious people and there was mockers there as well and there were those being saved, eyes being opened to see, to behold the Son of God, to know Him, to trust in Him, to believe in Him, and be saved. So you're not beyond the pale yet, Newcastle. You're not beyond the pale yet. Not unless, of course, that is you committed the unpardonable sin. There's only one of those. But if that's not you, then there's hope for you, but only in Jesus. I am, he says, the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No one gets right with God in any other name. Neither is there salvation in any other. None other name under heaven. Whereby you must be saved. Jesus the Lord. No other. No, sir. No. This one nearly, this one nearly, oh yeah, I've got one. Ah oh, well, ask your friends about that. So like I say friends, the word of God, check it out for yourself, get yourself a Bible, get a hold of one, read it, study, meditate, on the person of God's Son, Jesus Christ, sent into the world to save sinners like you that you might be rescued from what you can't rescue yourself from, deliver you from 
the very, the very pit of hell, redeem you from the grave. Wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord, <laughs> whom I declare to you here this afternoon in this wicked, evil generation in which you find yourself, not many, not many in this neck of the woods, not many in your nation today whom Jesus is saving, unbelief about wickedness, godlessness, unrighteousness, unholiness about. Not many, not many saved in these days in Newcastle under Lyme. But those, those who believe, those who hear, those who listen, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how you get saved. That's how you get faith. You haven't got it. God must give it to you comes by hearing and hearing, sometimes reading the Word of God. So read it for yourself. Check it out. Meditate on the person of God's Son, Jesus Christ. His yoke is easy, his burden is light, gentle, kind, easy to be entreated, to get along with. Lift the burden from off you give you rest for your soul, save you, deliver you. He's paid the price, the redemptive price. All that's left for you is to trust, to put your confidence in his person and what he has done, to believe that is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Salvation through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So like I say, get a, get a hold of the Bible, read for yourself, see things are so, read the words of Jesus himself, repent ye, he says, and believe, believe the gospel. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand, and that's the only way you can enter God's kingdom. Repent ye, he says, repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel. That's the way forward, that's the way up, and that's the way out of your evil hearts of unbelief. That's the only way. Back to God from the dark path of sin. May God bless you, Newcastle. Bless you, I say, and of mercy, mercy, mercy upon your damn worthy soul. <laughs>